Good morning guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to, I brought a bunch of stuff out to the table here and instead of giving you a tour as they sit, I'm going to show you some of my pinguiculas and sundews, but I brought them all out to just show you a bunch of different ones. Uh, these guys, they get neglected by me a little bit. I don't do as many videos on them as they deserve. Um, I probably don't give them as much care as they um, deserve either, but I've got a whole bunch to show you today. And although you can't see, I'm actually walking away from the camera right now to look for a little pair of scissors because we might as well do a little bit of trimming while we're at it. So why don't we get started? So let's get started with the one I always forget about. This poor guy here, he gets neglected. This is my sundew paradoxa. It is my most warm growing sundew. He likes lots of sun and heat. And he was doing really good. He was up on the top shelf with the Cattleyas. I put him um, in this clear thing of water or thing so I can see the water level in the pot. So it's a four inch pot in this plastic thing. It allowed me to um, monitor his water levels when he was really up high and he loved it up there. And then because I kept forgetting about him, I brought him down and put him on a, a lower shelf and he didn't do so good. These guys, they actually... Um, their flowers are not able to be pollinated by their own. They need a different um, a different plant genetically. You can't self-pollinate them. So I usually clip off the flowers because it takes um, a lot of their energy. But they constantly throw up flowers. So trim a few of those off. Make him look a little bit more presentable again. I could really go through him. I bought him a couple of years ago. There's a huge stock. I bought him a couple of years ago and... He was just one plant. Now he's got all kinds coming up. The um, peat moss is just totally covered in moss itself. You can't even see it anymore. But anyways, that is my Paradoxa Sunday. I'll put him back now so I can forget about him again. This guy here. This guy I always forget about as well. Poor guy. You guys are going to hate me for my care of my sundews. This guy is and aphens here so he needs a good trim he constantly gets these long stalks that um i constantly cut off because they actually overweigh him look at this all the seeds there and put those down there he really needs a good trim but that's him the sundews right now they're only in a semi sunny spot in the greenhouse here this is another one. I'm going to go through all the ones that are in the greenhouse first. This is my only pygmy sundew. It's a citrina, I think it's called. I have two of them. That is the only one I have though, the only kind I have. Ah, he's doing good. He's very low maintenance for me anyways, so that's good. What else do we got here? Tokiensis. He's in like a little tiny three inch pot with huge, I'm, huge flower stalks on him. They're all gone to seed now. I'm going to just cut a few flower stalks off. So there's a whole bunch of seeds there. And, but yeah, he does pretty good considering I, I realize they're all in lower light. They could look much redder, but um, it sort of is what it is for these guys. They, um, the, the premium spots get taken up by some of the bigger plants. And these guys just sort of get tucked away. This is a pot of Alice Sundews. That was from seed, actually. I just put a whole, like, one seed pod in there. And that's what came out of it. What else do we got here? This guy, Oblanciata. He's been taken over by sphagnum moss. I see the sphagnum is growing higher than the actual um, sundews himself. And then to boot, this sphagnum um, started getting crispy on the ends because it like grew higher than it should have. So again, lots of seeds here. The reason I'm trimming these seeds off is these guys are very, very easy to propagate. But if I don't control the seeds, they're going to be in everything. And I'm going to have a bunch of unknown sort of species. I'm going to have to try to figure out what they are. So that's an Oblanciata. 
What else do we got from in the greenhouse here? I keep piling them in front of you, but um, I'll do the outside plants after. That way you can distinguish which ones are growing in here. Here's a Bonita, the Fork Sundew. It's doing pretty good. It's a bigger plant. They got um, six inch forks on them. That was seed growing last winter. So it's doing quite well. There's another little pot kicking around here of them as well, but um, thought I'd only bring that out. Um, that's probably it for the indoor sundews that I can think of anyways. I don't know if I've missed any on any of the shelves there. Why don't we look at some Mexican butterworts? This guy here is one of my favorite little guys. I love him because he stays so small. Gemavensis, I'm probably saying that totally wrong. He's the only one that I propagated this year. You can see two new ones right there and right here. So I'll have four of them all together. I love the size of the flower compared to the size of the plant. It's absolutely awesome. On the other end of the spectrum, this is my Ping Gigantica. I was really hoping for a flower this year. Not so much. It needs a bit of a trim as well. Removing a few of the dead leaves. Now I heard um, this guy doesn't go dormant, so he'll keep growing all year. That one probably didn't need to come off yet. He's got a few dead bugs on him. And um, he'll continue to catch flies all, all winter. You can see quite a big mosquito or something's on him there. And some sort of wings from something else there. So he does get food in here. He's full of little moths on that one. A couple no type things up above. And anyways, let's zoom back out. That is the Ping Gigantica that didn't flower for me. Kind of disappointing. But this guy here is just growing out of control. This guy is the Agnada. I don't know if you can see that. It's not focusing for whatever reason. But anyways, it's the Agnata. I like it because it's got kind of a bluey purple flower to it. They look a little bit different than the um, regular flowers. But I also noticed it got like totally massacred by something this year. And it's almost growing past it now, but all the underneath leaves got like eaten by like a caterpillar or something. They have big chunks taken out of them. Luckily these guys, um, they go through their leaves really fast. They're always sort of growing this time of year. And yeah we got another flower from something else in here so the butterworts this time of year being their tropical butterworts or mexican butterwort sorry they're in well you can see like the water level here right there you can kind of see it they're in that much water when the water is gone i wait until the top soil starts to look a little bit dry and then i fill it back up again and that's sort of their care for this time of year the other things that are in here are the king sundews they're hurting this time of year the leaves got much smaller on them uh, they don't like the heat i think they're going to start to perk back up now that the nights are getting a little cooler i'm trying to bring up the other pot here just to show you i did do some transplanting stupid time of year but i transplanted um in about may just before all the heat i had two pots of three now i i kept the one pot of three because i didn't want to transplant them all at once and I have three pots of one. So, smaller leaves this time of year. I'm hoping they'll get back to it. Again, like everything else, I've been so busy, they haven't gotten as much food as they should have. But um, both plants, the ones that I did disturb the roots by transplanting over there, and the ones that I haven't disturbed the roots, they all have smaller leaves. So I know it's not from transplanting that did it. And But I think they'll come back for this, the, um, fall this was a plant that i wasn't brave enough to put outside although i'm sure they would appreciate the cooler nights i just didn't want to put them out now talking about outside the next ones i'll show you they're actually outside plants so this is my ping vulgaris it is completely dormant this time of year somewhere in around there you can see the ping um, the other one has gone so far down into the ground there, you can't even see it anymore. It um, looks like nothing. So they'll look like that probably until early next spring. My Capensis, because they're Capensis, I have them outside. I'll have these guys outside until it's frosty. Last year I had them out in freezing weather. They came back, but um, not so big. Uh, needs lots of trimming. You can see lots of dead leaves on it from being outside. 
Um, that's something for a different video though. I won't spend time doing it on this. This is the Alba form of Capensis. Here is a regular form of Capensis. Both doing well outside. And this guy here, I'm just reaching here, is one of my biggest sundews actually. So this guy is, oh there's a live moth in there. Remember I said I just brought them in from outside. I guess he's been stuck on the dew all night. Anyways, um, this guy is a uh, filiformis, variation tracei or trachei, depending how you say it. I like to say tracei after my wife. So anyways, this guy I did leave out last year and he froze, it got to minus eight. He barely made it. This year I'm gonna be much more careful with him. Only one rosette actually made it on this guy. I guess being that 90% um, of it died, it's done pretty good for for coming back anyways. It's definitely a strong grower and big plant. What are we gonna do with you? How long have you been there? We're gonna save that moth from um, what could have been a bad, bad day. So we'll throw him over there for now. He um, definitely was on the brink. These guys being outside, they catch all kinds of stuff on their own. So you can see, like, there's a there's a daddy long legs of some sort. They got caught in there. Outside is great. So these guys, when they're outside, they were in full sun all year. Even the capensas, which hate the heat, they, they went through full sun. I never let them dry out. And, um, you know, I can see already with the, the cooler September nights, they're starting to come back already. So we, we had a big heat wave in... August and it knocked some of them down a little bit including some stuff in the greenhouse like the king sundews but everything has started getting back to normal now back to controllable temperatures but anyways that is a table full of sundews and pinguiculas I hope you like this video kind of an interesting way to do an update and a little bit more in depth on certain species and missed a whole bunch of pings but what are you gonna do brought out some cool ones anyways for you to see and if you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe to my channel. As always, thanks for watching.